Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over solutions and so uh, follow along with your note packets and if you have any additional questions make sure you ask tomorrow. So what are the parts that make a solution a solution? So we're talking about a mixture of you know two different things. So we have a solvent and a solute. Every solution contains those two things. And something to keep in mind that we already talked about like in unit, I think it was seven. Uh, Water is the most common chemical solvent, and it's sort of a universal solvent for that reason. Uh, also, a solvent is defined as any substance that dissolves something else. So, water is a good one, but there are plenty of other things that are good at dissolving things. I mean, have you ever used paint thinner or turpentine or something like that? They smell very strong, but they're also really good at dissolving things. Uh, the part of the solution that you actually dissolve in the solvent, that's called the solute. So if you want to write this down, this might actually help, that a solution equals, okay, a solute plus a solvent, and that's just true of any solution. Now, what people kind of get confused by is um, whether they have to be lo uh, liquid, solid, gas. They can be any state of matter, actually. Um, you can have two solids, so one solid solvent and a solid solute. You can have a gaseous solvent and a liquid solute. I mean, there are a lot of different examples out there of different types of solutions. What is a way of telling us how much solute is floating around in an aqueous solution of stuff. Well, concentration is the big word that gets used. And so something that you should be familiar with are the terms concentrated and dilute. So the higher the concentration something is, the more solute there is inside of it. And we often call that a concentrated solution. Uh, next time, take a look at your orange juice bottle and see if it says not from concentrate. Um, that's a way of telling you it's authentic orange juice. Uh, also, the lower the concentration, the less solute there is, and we call that a dilute solution. So what we have here is some Coke syrup that has been diluted, I think it's cherry Coke actually, with water. And so uh, over here we have very concentrated syrup with not very much water in it, and as you go down this way it becomes more and more diluted. Okay, and so those terms are just sort of descriptive ways of describing how much stuff there is floating around in a solution. If something's concentrated, there's a lot of solute. If something is dilute, there isn't as much. So how are we going to be measuring concentration? We're going to use a unit called molarity, or capital M. Okay, and the equation for molarity is it's moles of solute over liters of solution. So this is the equation. Again, the abbreviation for molarity is capital M, though. So that's the reason why that's also there. How are we going to find molarity? Well, the key thing there is moles of solute. Moles comes back to haunt us again. So we have to be able to convert from grams to moles in order to get molarity. Because, again, we don't go into a stock room and find, you know, 10 moles of something. You have to measure it in grams and then convert it into moles. So let's try solving this example. What is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 11.5 grams of NaOH to make a 1.50 liter solution? All right, so let's use molarity to figure this out. So I have molarity equals moles over liters. I have something right here, though, in grams. So I have 11. It almost looks like I don't have 11 anymore. Uh, I have 11.5 grams of NaOH. So how can I convert that into moles? I divide by molar mass. So what is the molar mass of NaOH? You can look that up on the periodic table and add them together. I have 11.5 grams. I would divide by the molar mass, which is 40 grams in one mole. Okay, and now I have about 0 0.2875 moles worth of NaOH. Okay, that's nice and easy. So now I have this component, I have moles. All I got to do now is divide by 1.50 liters and I'll have my molarity. So let's plug in those numbers. So molarity would be 0 0.2875, and that's moles, divided by 1.50 liters. So when you plug that in your calculator, what do you get? You get about, if we're using significant figures at least, uh, 0 0.192. And so what is our unit? Well, there are two ways of representing this unit. You can do a capital M, 
okay? Or you can do moles over liters. They are equivalent. So we can either use this as our unit or we can use capital M as our unit. Either way, it's considered correct. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, example, what is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 1.56 grams of gaseous HCl in water to make a 26.8 milliliter solution? And as a reminder, it says that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. All right, so there are a couple of very important things that we need to point out here while we're going through this. Uh, the first is, of course, since molarity is, you know, sort of mentioned here, I'm going to have to use moles over liters, which is our molarity equation. Uh, the other thing is, these are the units of molarity, moles and liters. So if I'm given any information in other units, I need to make sure I convert to moles over liters. So the first piece of information that I'm given here is 1.56 grams of gaseous HCl. The second piece of information I'm given is to make a 26.8 milliliter solution. All right, so let's work at this one step at a time. 1.56 grams of HCl. I need to somehow convert that to moles. So when I do that, do I multiply or do I divide by molar mass? I divide and I need to know the molar mass, so I need to add up my elements from the periodic table. I get about 36.5 grams in one mole of HCl. Why did I divide? Well, my grams are going to cancel away. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get about 0.0427 moles of HCl. That's good because that is a unit that I can use in my molarity equation. Next up, I have 26.8 milliliters. I can't use milliliters. I need to convert that into liters. So what do I do? I divide by 1,000 milliliters because there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. All right, so when I do that, my milliliters cancel, and I'm left with 0 0.0268 liters, which is now a unit that I can plug into this part of my molarity equation. So take 0 0.0427 moles and divide it by 0 0.0268 liters, and that will give you your molarity. And what does our molarity end up being? It ends up being about 1.60. And that would be the molarity of my solution, which makes sense because I'm using a tiny amount of HCl in a tiny amount of liquid. And so a molarity of about 1.60 moles per liter isn't exactly that surprising. Let's take a look at the next example. Do a chemical analysis. A chemist needs one liter of an aqueous 0.200 molar solution of K2Cr2O7. How much solid K2Cr2O7 should he weigh out to make this solution? So the important thing to recognize here is that even though I am, you know, looking not necessarily for molarity, uh, the molarity equation has moles over liters, so I can definitely use any of those units to kind of, you know, solve for a missing piece. And so I have right here one liter and I have a amount in molarity, okay, capital M. So I can technically use my equation of molarity equals moles over liters to solve for the missing piece, which would be moles, okay? If I know that the molarity, like it says, is 0 0.200 capital M, and I know that I have one liter worth of solution, then all I really need to find is the number of moles, okay? And it does say, how much solid should he weigh out? So even though I'm going to find an answer in moles, I can easily convert that into grams. I'm not stuck with moles as my final unit. So when we do this, we cross multiply. And so think through this. I have zero point. 200 capital M. Now what is capital M? It's moles over liters. So when I multiply this by one liter to get X, what do I actually do? Well, my liters cancel out and I'm left with a unit in moles like I wanted. So I have 0 0.200 moles of K2Cr2O7. Now all I need to do is know the molar mass of my substance. I need to find the molar mass of K2Cr2O7, and then I can find my number of grams. 
So using your periodic table, what do you find the molar mass of K2Cr207 to be? Well, depending on how you round, I got um, about 294. So uh, all I've got to do is multiply by about 294 grams in one mole. And then notice that my moles cancel away, and I'm left with an answer in grams. So when we do that out, what do we get? About 58.5 grams. So about 58.5 grams, that's how much I would need to actually weigh out. If I put that in a one liter container and filled it up, you know, with one liter's worth of water or up to that line, um, I would have a 0.2 molar solution of K2Cr207. So again, think through the molarity questions. Don't just sort of blindly go and, you know, just start plugging things in. Actually follow the process. Like, what are you looking for? What can you plug in? What are you missing? And what can you solve for? If you have any questions, feel free to ask tomorrow.